This is part 5, where the intention is to resurface a warped cylinder head using sandpaper. My theory is to use grit 60, then 120 sandpaper with a spray mount adhesive to temporarily fix the paper in place to a 57 by 86 cm stone slab, then push the cylinder head back and forth. Here's a photo of the cylinder head before I start. And here's a photo showing the overall area that will be resurfaced. Honda states that the maximum warpage is 0.05mm and that the maximum resurfacing limit is 0.2mm. So just before sanding I noticed that the coolant pipe connected to the cylinder head was protruding slightly and was in danger of being part sanded away, so this needed to be removed. Two bolts requiring a 10mm socket. So this is a bit like a five-way uh, coolant manifold, um, with number five being the back of this, which is connected direct to the cylinder head. So obviously this needed to be removed. As you can see, the pipe on the right is just protruding above the surface of the cylinder head. So there's bolt one, bolt two, and then we can just pull this away and note the rubber seal inside there which we'll need replacing. Now to check the head using a straight edge and some feeler gauges. I will paint the surface with layout blue to aid in the camera seeing the feeler gauges and also to assist in showing me how the resurfacing progress is going. So you definitely want to put gloves on for this especially with layout blue as it dyes everything. So my idea was I'd use a cotton face um, pad and dab the cylinder head with the layout blue. So here we are. So I'll speed this up. Now one thing I did forget to do was remove the dowel between the cylinder head and the engine block which is there on the top left of the picture. So I just had needed to pull that out very carefully like so. Thankfully it came out okay. Put that to somewhere safe and carry on dabbing. So now it was nice and blue, ready for the next stage. And the next stage was to use the paintbrush because the cotton pad didn't really work. So we'll speed this up again and we're now using a paintbrush. As you can see, it's a lot bluer. So this may actually show us much more clearly. So the layout blue just needs to dry now, or we can speed it up using a warm hot gun. Since Honda states that the maximum warpage is 0.05mm, I will start with that size first. So for this I'm going to use a 600mm precision straight edge from Sealy. So the first feeler gauge is two thousandth of an inch and I expected that one to pass underneath the straight edge with no problem, which obviously it did. Now for a slightly thicker 0.076mm feeler gauge. So moving on to the 3,000th of an inch feeler gauge, which is 0.076mm. Now this clearly is still passing underneath with no problems. So we know the wall pitch is probably quite high on this. Slightly thicker again. 0.102mm. So 0.102mm translates to four thousandth of an inch, which is fairly warped. And this feeler gauge is also passing underneath with no problems. Slightly thicker yet again, 0.127mm. So 
So 0.127 millimetres translates to five thousandth of an inch. And sadly, it's still passing underneath. I'm thinking this cylinder head might be at maximum warpage. Thicker steel, 0.152 millimetres. The 0.152 millimetres translates to six thousandth of an inch, and that is pretty warped. And again, it's passing underneath in places. And even thicker, 0.178 millimetres. Thankfully, it's actually starting to get a bit tighter at 7,000th of an inch, which is 0.178 millimetres. But it is still passing under in places. Finally, 0.203 millimetres. So finally, and somewhat alarmingly, 8,000th of an inch, which is 0.203 millimetres. That's the warpage on this head. Lastly, to see if a 0.229mm feeler gauge will slide under. So if this goes under at 9,000th of an inch, we're in real trouble. But thankfully it doesn't, so maybe we have a chance of trying to rescue this head. So I checked the slab over with my straight edge first to ensure it was true and flat and then used a spray mount adhesive to stick two parallel strips of 60 grit sandpaper down. So the idea then was to use the weight of the cylinder head to keep it down on the sandpaper and just push it backwards and forwards like so and also to rotate the head just in case I was pushing um, in an uneven manner. So then I check it regular. As you can see there, and then keep going. I only did the 60 grit for a short while as it's very coarse. I then removed that paper and glued 120 grit down. So I used a scraper on the slab to make sure the old glue had been removed. And then cut my new strips which are 120 grit, give them a spray with some spray mount adhesive, pop those over and that should hold it nice and firm while the head goes back and forth. Give it a repaint over with the blue so that we can see how it's going and quickly dry that off. Off we go again. So I kept rotating the head on a regular basis, so like I say, in case I was pushing in an uneven manner. So by putting the marking blue on, you can clearly see where the sandpaper is actually wearing the head away, and which areas are still needing to be sanded down. Now I also went to the other side of the table as well. The idea being that if there was any bias in the way I was pushing or pulling that it would be evened out by constantly turning the head around and by me pushing from either side of the stone slab. Because what I didn't want to do was wear it more in one particular part of the head, which obviously is a risk by doing it in this way. So it's getting there now. There's still some blue to come off, so time to change the paper and we'll put some new down, give it a good scrape. So repeat the process all over again, give it a nice spray, pop it over, make sure the edges are close to each other because that could affect how it was sanded 
and then give it some blue again. The blue definitely helps us see what's happening. And back to pushing again. So being that this head was actually seriously warped, I was quite surprised at how quick the sandpaper actually cut down the head. Um, even 120 grit, it was quite effective. And there we are. So it's just the centre. Pistons 2 and 3, which is where the issue seems to have been. So, back we go. At least we're nearly getting there. Not far now. But as the head wears down, it actually gets harder to push because obviously there's more surface area on the sandpaper. So it's well worth getting the aluminium off the paper to give you maximum cutting from the paper that's there. Yes, it does get tiring. So the blue is showing clearly what we have left. Now I presume that's perhaps where the water was actually seeping through the head gasket into those two centre cylinders. So like I say, you do need to push a lot harder as it wears down because you are sanding the whole head just to try and remove the centre part. And just remember to keep rotating it. So hopefully by rotating it and changing sides there should be minimum bias that might affect how the head's actually being cut. So we must be nearly getting there now. Yeah, it's very close. I think we are finally getting there. So I think this is probably about as much as we can do on this head. Hopefully it's enough. So all the blue is now gone. So it's as flat as I can get it using this method. I just hope this actually works when it's back on the car. That's the big question. But it looks nice. Okay, so now to try that 0.051mm feeler gauge, or two thousandth of an inch. So back out with the Sealy Precision straight edge and our two thousandth of an inch feeler gauge. So that's definitely looking good. It's not going in between. Wasn't sure about this though. It did pass under at the end of the cylinder head. Now whether that's going to be an issue I don't know, but obviously hope it won't be. Definitely seems flat. It didn't pass under there. It passed under there though, again at the other end of the block. So whether by pushing it, um, I did add some bias to the sanding process, I don't know. But it's certainly better than it was and hopefully that's enough just to resolve this problem. So the little pile on the right hand side is the actual aluminium that was sanded off the head and that weighed about 18 grams so allowing for some wastage perhaps call it 20 grams so it was a small little pile of aluminium there I mean hopefully this engine will be okay 
I think it's been sanded to the maximum allowable by Honda. So we are pushing the limits. But it might be just enough. Time will tell. So it certainly seems okay between the cylinders. So I'll check again here. And there's clearly no way the feeler gauge is going to go under there between the cylinders. So that's good news at least. Thank you for watching and please see part 6 in this series.